Rupert Sheldrake, principle of intention, states that potential becomes the actual when local conditions are favorable. He calls, he calls this formative causation. When local conditions are favorable to make the possible the actual, that's formative causation. What does that look like? This is what it looks like. How do we, formative causation means making local conditions favorable. How do we make local conditions favorable for this apple seed, which is what it is, to become an apple tree? Sun, water, rain. Planet. It's not enough to know what we won't do with this seed. Do you understand? Well, we shouldn't put it in the ground. It shouldn't stay on the counter. It's not enough to know what we shouldn't do with it. We've got to know what we do do with it, which is the third law of motion. Okay? You need to understand it. You have, you have to think positively about what to do proactively. Well, we shouldn't put it, we shouldn't leave it on the counter. Nice. Is that going to make local conditions favorable? It shouldn't be in sight. Is that going to make local conditions favorable for the seed? We should put it in the ground. Does that make local conditions favorable? Do you understand the difference? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not enough to know what you shouldn't do. You have to know what you should do. But most and then of you us, have to do it. But most of us are more worried about what we don't want. Most of us only know what we don't want. Which is impossible then to make local conditions favorable. Formative causation then is impossible. Because if you only know what you don't want, it's like saying, well, we sh well, the seed shouldn't stay on the counter. Nice. I'm pretty clear on that. But I, that's not forward. There's no forward motion in that. So in order to make, to have formative causation happen, I have to make local conditions favorable, I mean, which just means I have to plant the seed. All of the potential in this seed already exists for it to become the apple seed. Right? I, I, don't, I don't give it the potential. It already is. I just make local conditions favorable. Formative causation. Which means I just put it in the ground. I don't know how this seed becomes an apple tree after I put it in the ground. But I trust that it does. Why? Because I've seen it again and again and again. Formative causation. Does that make sense? So, universal law number three says it's not, we, it's not enough that we know what we don't want. I'm tethered then to what I don't want. I cannot work with two opposing forces at the same time. Knowing what I don't want keeps me tethered to what I don't want. Does that make sense? Don't put the seed in the ground. Nice. I get that that's probably formative causation isn't going to happen then. What's the only way to make local conditions favorable then? Oh, so you know what we want. We have to not, not just know what we don't want, we have to know what we want. And move forward only in that direction. And then we untether from the unknown to the known. And we then make local conditions favorable. Which sheltering causes, calls formative causation. If what you are holding in mind is negative or a limiting belief system, that is what you will have a greater potential to bring to pass. It shouldn't look like this. Great, you're tethered. I don't want it to look like that. Great, you're not moving anywhere. If you only know what you don't want, you're stuck. You only cut that tie when you also know very, very clearly what you do want. So we have to get clear about that. What you want, think. Otherwise, we are just like Alice in Wonderland. Do you remember when she gets and approaches the Cheshire Cat? She's chasing the white rabbit, and she says, can you help me? He says, sure. She says, what do you need? What road should I take? Do you remember what, she, what her answer is? Where do you want to go? He's, his is, know. where do you want to go? What does she say? I don't know. I don't know. What's it his answer? It doesn't matter where you want. It where does, you take any road. Yeah. Take any road, doesn't matter. Universal law number three. In action. Take any road, it doesn't matter. You're stuck, it doesn't matter. You're aimless. It doesn't matter. Okay, without knowing where you want to go, it doesn't matter. Take any road. That's like getting into the car in the Never Lost and sitting there and expecting it to calculate any route. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Nice. Are we stuck from that position? When is the only time that Never Lost kicks in? When I type in my destination. Oh. Right? The never lost system, if, I, if we got in the car and we sat there and we're like, where are we going? I don't know. Nice. Where are you going to stay? Right here. 
right? Or if you get in and just start driving around and expect the never lost to work. What's the matter? We don't know where you're going. I can't get you there if you don't know where you're going. We have to be very, very clear on that. Or we set ourselves up for failure. By law. By law. My dad has the same. Uh, I haven't heard him say it in a long time, but he used to say it often. Like, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's true. You'll always end it's up true. somewhere else. This is the reason I stopped marriage and family counseling. As a marriage and family counselor for 10 years, and this is the biggest reason why. First reason was people would bring other people in and say, fix them. Okay? Not me. I'm not broken. Fix her. I'm not broken. Fix him. And when I asked, what do you want to see? 90% of the time, I would get a list of, I don't want him to do this, I don't want him to do this, I don't want him to do this. I want her to stop this, to stop this, and to stop this. Stuck. Do you understand? By law, you're stuck. What do you want to see? I don't know, but I don't want to see that. Uh, okay? If all you can focus on is I don't want to see that, what are you going to see? That. But if you can clearly tell me, I would like to see this and this and this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We've just made progress. Okay? Intention. Absolutely matters in everything. What do you want to see? What do you want to see? We cannot work with two opposing forces in the, at the same time because we're bound. We can't. It's impossible. By law. We can't serve two masters. That's what it means when it says we can't serve two masters. We can't work with the opposing forces of nature at the same time. I'm either moving forward or I'm stuck. I'm either here or I'm there. If I want to go here, i got to stop doing this here so I can, I'm free to move there. Okay? We did this one. So our thoughts must be retrained so that we're not serving two masters, right? So if all I can focus on is stress, anxiety, worry, and fear, what am I tethered to? Stress, anxiety, worry, and fear, right? If I dare believe that what I truly want to see is peace, harmony, cooperation, and prosperity, and I let go of stress, anxiety, worry, and fear, by law, what do I have to start producing in my life? You need to understand, because matter resists change, this is important to note, that if we are, if you as an individual are in relationships, it doesn't matter whether they're family, interpersonal, business relationships, sibling, marital, or business, it doesn't matter. If you are in this, and you're moving to this, and say this is just, you know, it's drama and it's stressful. And you're moving to all I want to see is peace and fulfillment. The people that are causing, that are, that are here with you, when you move to here, are going to increase their poor behavior. Because matter resists change. So if you're shifting to here, what's going to happen is you're going to see an increase of this negative behavior. Because it's kind of like, they're like, you're not serious about this. Really, you don't want to be there. I'm just going to continue to do what I do more. And if you stay in that place where this is the only thing that you want to see and the only places that you're, that you're going, they have to stop doing what they're doing. You've changed the recipe. If you alone add more sugar, it's going to be sweeter. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. But this behavior, this negative behavior, will increase before it goes away or gets better. Why? Matter resists change. What are we? Organized matter. So are the people in your life. Perfectly intentionally organized matter. They're used to doing the same thing over and over again. And even if it's not a good result you want, if you do something do different, they're going to resist change. Sorry. You're fine. I'm trying to get rid of your little thingy one. Sorry. Does that make sense? Negative behavior will increase before it gets better. Plan on it. 